Welcome to Belize Watch. On the 15th of January 2022, he would have been 103 years old. But what he left behind will far stretch into eternity because he left an independent country behind, a country by the name of Belize, and a proud people who call ourselves Belizeans. Born on the 15th of January, 1919, the father of the nation, the Right Honorable George Price, passed away on the 19th of September, 2011. The Right Honorable George Price surely lived up to what is written on his tomb here in the Lord Ridge Cemetery, where we are at this time. The Right Honorable George Price, father of the nation of Belize, a good Belizean, one who went through life on a pilgrimage and left the world a better place than he found it. And he has certainly and we are all testament that he left Belize a better place than how he found it. He found a Belize that was in the grips of colonialism, a Belize where we were not even known as Belizeans, we were known as British Hondurans or subjects. And he created, along with many others, myself included, a nation known as Belize and a people who are proud and very proud to call themselves Belizeans. So today, through our show, we take a little look at some of the highlights of the life of this good Belizean. This good Belizean who, as written on his grave, went through life on a pilgrimage and left the world a better place than he found it. Right Honorable George C. Price father of the nation of Belize. Watches partners, and these partners are Debari Stores, the National Gas Company of Belize, Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, and Shell Belize. We'll be back after a word from our partners. <laughs> The National Gas Company Limited was born of the need for the country of Belize to have a marine gas terminal of its own, thereby securing supplies of critical cooking gas for a growing population. As Belize's population grew, the time came for a modern marine gas terminal that ensured safety, security of supply, and the requisite infrastructure for industry-accepted quality assurance now demanded by the people of Belize. In 2020, the National Gas Company Limited became a reality. The National Gas Company Limited is a $60 million public-private partnership where Belize's private sector would design, finance, construct and manage a state-of-the-art national marine terminal facility and two complementary storage depots away from the coast. After 15 years, the National Gas Company will be fully turned over to the country and people of Belize at no cost to the taxpayer. The National Gas Company of Belize, fueling Belize forward. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, BNEC, is a public-private partnership between Belize Natural Energy Limited and the government of Belize. The trust was set up in February 2008, whereby 1% of the revenues from BNE flows to the trust to give Belizeans a chance to create a mindset to empower themselves. To date, over 11 million 
100,000 Belizean dollars have been invested in educational and social environment projects and programs throughout Belize. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, contributing to the education and empowerment of Belizeans. Shell V Power with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well, go Shell! We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Orndrag, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry. Get more? Pieles. George Cadle Price was born on January 15, 1919 in Belize City to parents William Cadle Price and Irene Cecilia Escalante. In October of 2009, I spoke with Mr. Price about his life and dedication to Belize. He shared about his early life, including his experience during the 1931 hurricane. What was it like for you growing up in Belize? What was life like at the time um, uh, when you were a little boy growing up in it's Belize? It was a little world. But it was at the time of the great worldwide epidemic, mm -hmm. the Spanish flu. Mm -hmm. And people were dying on the street. So I spent most of the day right here in this house and they wouldn't let me go out. Mm -hmm. But people were dying on the streets. Yeah. So it was the time of the Spanish flu. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Dr. Houston, I heard the joke that they went to him and he said, go out and drink, drink, get drunk, get drunk. Mm -hmm. That's the only way, there was no cure for it. Mm -hmm. So old Dr. Houston, that was his, his uh, recommendation to the people who went to him. But I, what this was my sort of secluded place. I didn't know what was going on most of the time. Yeah. I stayed right at home. How old were you when you had those, these memories of the, of the Spanish flu? It was when I read them, maybe 10 years ago. Oh, about 10 years ago. But as a boy, I heard the people saying how the people used to die on the street. Mm -hmm. And how things were deadly out there, the people were dying. Mm -hmm. But it never occurred to me, this was like happy home here, this little house paradise. It was. This is the house you were born in, Mr. Price? Born right upstairs. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, lived in it all my life. I am about the only person in our family who have lived in the South all my life. I've lived nowhere else. Nowhere else. Yes. Even when you were Prime Minister and you had uh, access to other residences, you still chose to stay? Right, yeah. Not one night I spent in the Premier's Lodge. <laughs> Not one night. Oh, wow. <laughs> now going back to growing up, tell me about uh, going to school and, and, and what you recollect of going to school and, and some of the friends you went to school with. My first school was to send me to St. Catherine's Academy the school of my sisters and I went in one of the classes that were mostly girls but I was and a few boys like it's going to a school with the infants mm -hmm. I was there for a year or two mm -hmm. then after that I crossed over to what we call the public school mm -hmm. right next door they were on um, between Gabriel Lane and the sea and the St. Catherine's Academy was like that to the sea on the right mm -hmm. and the schools, the public schools were to the left. And the, the, where the boys had their classes were on the sea, the building near the sea. And the girls near the street, the uh, Gabriel Lane. And that is where I went to school, first in the academy, then over to the section of the boys. We were all a male school in those days. The boys in one building and the girls in another building. Mm -hmm. And that's where I did my early years of primary. And then the Jesuits at the cathedral bought the old residence of the Belize Estate and Produce Company. Mm -hmm. Those buildings that are there today. That was their office, their office and, and their uh, 
in the, in the showroom where they used to live. And they used to live upstairs. But when they bought it, it became a school, the building that is there today. That's the, the, the diocesan center um, by the Twin Bridge. That, yeah. Is that what you're referring to? No. 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 What, what, what building are you referring to? You pass the canal and come towards here. Those two white houses that look alike, where the school is. Holy Redeemer. Holy Redeemer. Oh, the buildings that hold him, I, I, I think. That is the school now, Holy Redeemer. Uh -huh. We used to belong to the Belize Estate and Produce Company. I didn't know that it belonged to the Belize Estate and Produce sure. Company. Yeah. So I've learned something yeah. now. I, I thought that was always a part of the Roman Catholic diocese. No, why did they sell them? I don't know. Maybe they were they were once the biggest landowners, and we used to fight them yes. in the Belize Estate. Uh -huh. But they got out of that and kept the, on the other side, the uh, street of, uh, of North Front Street, where there was Logwood and uh, and the, the vessels. They had okay. two big sailing vessels there. I can recall that they used to do chicle right at that uh, and uh, and chicle and warehouse and chicle right warehouse. in front of the cathedral. Then the bottom dollar, that is so. Uh -huh. And the big that. yard was where they store logs. Logwood was for dyes, they used to import them to Europe. Yes. Then they discovered some new source of uh, of colors, they can get in calling for 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 for, for, for clothes. Uh -huh. And that put that trade out from us, the Lagwood trade. So as a boy you too, you'll remember all the lot of mahogany that used to float down the, the Belize River, the Hallover Creek, I right? I do, and <laughs> used to walk on them sometimes. <laughs> the logs floating, and they uh -huh. drifted out to the ship there, and they would load them in big logs, yes, so on board. Big, 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 big pieces of logs that they That's used to, right. that they used to um, load, load and, and, and board those. those, 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 those Steelers, yeah, yeah. lift them out of the water and put them on. And they used to go to New York. That was the buyer, I.T. Williams and Sons. They were the buyer of the mahogany logs. But every log had a life of its own. Everything was written by Mr. Joe Cowie about the log, where they came from, their, their size, and different things about it. It was like a, 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 pers a person. Mm -hmm. So they knew what the log was. Keep track of everything. Yeah. Yes, and they, they went to uh, New Jersey, where they were then made into furniture and different things. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, no. Um, you finished school at Holy Redeemer, and then you went on to St. John's, John's College. College. Uh -huh. I finished school at Holy Redeemer in the year of the hurricane, Ni 1931 hurricane. Yes. And from there, I went on to St. John's College. And the hurricane, that was the end of it there. Yeah. What was, what's your recollection of the 1931 hurricane? That I escaped death about three times in one day. <laughs> the first one was at the college, the whole college. The um, Jefferson Constructing Construction Company built it, but they built it cheap. There was no ferro, there was no metal in the post. It was just stones and cement. Mm -hmm. And we saw it falling down and we ran out because the columns were giving way. And we got out in time and took refuge behind the sea wall because the breeze was from the northwest. And then the lull came and we all got out, saw the destruction. In fact, while we were running to the sea wall, we heard like thunder behind us when the building fell down and some were caught. We got out that day and took refuge behind the sea wall on the sea. Then the, um, the half came, the, the, the center passed, yeah. and it was like a sunny day. Mm -hmm. And then, so when I got out and Carl Keitel, Keitel, the Keitel's my cousin, he took me to um, his home on Albert Street, Albert and Dean. And when the second, and while going there, I saw like a big wall, looking out to sea, I saw a big wall coming. I see that it was a tidal wave coming, coming. And when the blowing started for the uh, second half of hurricanes, if we, the center parts over here get the first half and the second half. Well, when the second half started, well, <coughs> while I was at Miss Keitel, and the house began to shake where we were. 
But that house stood the hurricane. But we went down to the ground, uh, level of the ground, to the bakery. That is where the Methodist church fell on top of it and got out from there. That was the second escape, the second escape. of that day. Mm. Then I went, I ran out. Some were caught, mm. they were killed. Mm. But I was lucky, I came out and went to um, Albert Street. And that was the second experience. I had to take off my clothes, heavy mm. shirt and pants and just in my underwear. And the street was just littered with, with wires, electric wires, and I don't know how they didn't get, they didn't even scratch. But the, the water was, in some place you had to swim because it was high enough, other places you waded. That was Albert Street. Then when I got where the theater is now, used to be in the palace, palace yeah. there was my friend, Mr. who lived across the street, Terry Young, he saw me and he called me in. I had on my drawers, homemade drawers, <laughs> and on the shirt, that's all I had. And barefooted. Wow. Look, going back in there, I don't know how I was caught up there. You we went well, all the hours. You were uh, oh, being oh, saved oh, for oh, a greater was. purpose, Mr. Pardon? You were being saved for a greater purpose. Looking at it, I escaped death about three times a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you went on to, to St. John, the new St. John's when it was built. The, the, how, how did how you? Was it? The transition. The transition. Well, I went. Um, Ronald Young took me to my aunt and she put on her little boy's suit on me. I was in my drawers and shirt mm -hmm. and sent me home. That was a part of Ronald Young. I always remember him. Mm -hmm. He brought me home that day. Mm -hmm. Then times went on and Ronald, I don't know where he went. He was, I think in the Mahogna works. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you were asking something. Yes. Then I went to school from St. John's College. You know, I was there before from St. John's, then went to St. John's. Then I went back to Holy Redeemer. Mm -hmm. And those were the days when the school had already passed from the seaside to uh, the Lake. 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 No, primary school right out there. Oh, so, okay, you're, yeah. you're going back to primary school. Yeah, so, okay. yeah. So 19, but 1931, and you, you, you said you were the same year you finished primary school. Primary right? school, uh -huh. and then started high school. Uh, but you were already at high school at St. John's when the hurricane happened, that's what you were That's what I'm understanding. Because, yes, St. John's moved to there. That then is St. how John's it moved, moved. Moved because it was destroyed. Yeah. So the college was right here at the Northland Street. You're right, and Northland Street, uh, where the diocesan center now is, yeah. in that area there. No, but more where was the it? school building are, those two buildings past the canal. You go down from Queen Street to Norton Street and came here towards it. And that's where the two identical buildings with a iron walkway between, that was the old headquarters of the Belize Estate and Produce Company. And finished by primary school there. And then went on to St. John's College for the destruction of the college. Yes, I, I escaped death three times that day. You did the entire St. John's College, um, did you? That day, oh yes, the, yeah. the entire course, uh, yeah. four years at St. John's in College, here, here, yeah, here yeah. In, 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 in downtown Willie City, basically. Yes, yes, yes. That is so. That was before they moved to Landiva. Before they moved, but then shortly afterwards they moved on to Landiva, farther up from the land and they built there, Landiva. We will continue to look back at the life of national hero George Cadle Price after we say thank you to our partners. B&E Charitable Trust, working in the development of Belize by inspiring young Belizean entrepreneurs to dream and to dream big. The National Gas Company, fueling Belize forward. The National Gas Company makes sure that you not only have a guaranteed supply of gas for every household need, but also that it is of the highest quality always. Shell Belize has been fueling Belize for many, many years and have done so reliably and with a lot of dependability. Dibari Stores, Dibari Stores in Belize City, Belmopan, San Ignacio, Orange Walk and San Pedro. Dibari Stores, offering you much more for much less. <music>
The National Gas Company Limited was born of the need for the country of Belize to have a marine gas terminal of its own, thereby securing supplies of critical cooking gas for a growing population. As Belize's population grew, the time came for a modern marine gas terminal that ensured safety, security of supply, and the requisite infrastructure for industry-accepted quality assurance now demanded by the people of Belize. In 2020, the National Gas Company Limited became a reality. The National Gas Company Limited is a $60 million public-private partnership where Belize's private sector would design, finance, construct and manage a state-of-the-art national marine terminal facility and two complementary storage depots away from the coast. After 15 years, the National Gas Company would be fully turned over to the country and people of Belize at no cost to the taxpayer. The National Gas Company of Belize, fueling Belize forward. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, BNEC, is a public-private partnership between Belize Natural Energy Limited and the Government of Belize. The trust was set up in February 2008, whereby 1% of the revenues from BNE flows to the trust to give Belizeans a chance to create a mindset to empower themselves. To date, over 11 million 100,000 Belizean dollars have been invested in educational and social environment projects and programs throughout Belize. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, contributing to the education and empowerment of Belizeans. Shell V Power, with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well! Go Shell! We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Orndrag, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry, get more, be less. In our 2009 conversation with Mr. Price, he shared how the date for independence as well as the flag were selected. He said when it was time to select Belize's first governor general, he was looking for a woman of humble beginnings. How the decision, why, 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 why the 21st of September for independence? Day? I selected the date. That's it. I named the day. You had to name the day some words and I put the 21st. Now the reason is 21, you get it by 7 multiplied by 3. And they were magic numbers to me. 3 was the Blessed Trinity and 7 were the 7 sacraments. So that was the 21st. In fact, I almost forgot to tell them it was the 21st. It was the night when I was getting ready to read London. I had to phone Mr. Redley. I forgot to tell you the date of independence. I was leaving. I said, it's the 21st. And they accepted it right away. No problem with that. So that's, in, that's interesting. Now, the selection of our first Governor General, Dr. Dame Minita Gordon, um, you, you, you had to select the Governor General, right? Yes. Now, how, how, how did you go about selecting the Governor General? How, how did that process happen, take place? She stood out on my mind once and uh, before independence. I first, I looked behind and there was the minute of walking and putting a whole energy to it. I said, that's the lady we need. I dominated her to be the governor general. And I wanted to be a woman too. And I wanted to be a woman from humble circumstances. We're not going to be Mrs. This and Dr. That and that. Humble people. That's why the four senators were the two first. Luis Dali and uh, Senator Vasquez. They were humble people, they were domestics, so that we can govern ourselves. And we had a way to prepare the people for independence. Otherwise, many of us, 
It is what's happening in St. George's Key today, you know. All that mockery about saving. Who owns the houses? Then the merchants have believed. And the people, the poor people have to live in Fisherman Town. That, that's another mockery. That's why I could never have my heart in that. So your philosophy in life, Mr. Price, has always been a more a humble person oriented philosophy. Give me a philosophy and of life. My philosophy is the people that own the country, the people, not Mr. This and Mr. The Other. Is that so tough? That is our philosophy. It's the people that own it. And with their support, we got independence. And uh, there was a man from, um, from Tan Tanzania, Salem Salem. We must internationalize our problem. And that's how we did it. Because all, all from the um, from the Caribbean, we went to the Donna Lines, and in the end, we got the whole world with us. Mm. Bobby Lester told me a stunning story about it when you decided that we must internationalize uh, the, the Belize question. How you sent him? Salem, as Salem, Salem. That, 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 that's where the idea came from. Uh -huh. Salem, Salem, Salem. We must internationalize the problem. <laughs> and that's how we did it. And so you pick up Bobby Leslie as a Schumann and Shirley Harvey and send them to, to the United Nations. <laughs> That is true, they were there too. They did a good job there. And they had an inter, 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 independent secretariat, you all remember, Said Musa, um, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Courtney. We had an independent secretariat. We were ready for independence. We had all our, I think the Constitution was ready. Partisan helped a lot. PJ, he was a brilliant lawyer. They, uh, what was he, Prime Minister of Jamaica? Did you have to make him Prime Minister of Jamaica? Oh, yes, we had all those people on our side. And there was one from uh, British Guiana. Russell Jackson. Jackson, that is. We had the intellectuals on our side. That's why I could face Mr. Um, the man, the Colonial Secretary, Ian. Ian, Ian, Ian. Huh? My God, as, as equal to equal, I could face him. And he sighed right away. He said, you can have it when you want. No, no, no. Um, what, was the feel, what was your feeling? What was going through your mind on Independence Day itself when you um, actually took out the articles of, of, of a constitution, I don't know, constitution from Prince Michael of Kent? I said, no, my feeling was the problem of ours. We had to get rid of the British colonial system, and we had to deal with the opposition here. Mm. It became very clear to me that we'll have to do that. Mm. That's right. Uh, right after independence, I toured the country, mm. getting to know the people, getting ready for this government, self-government. No, no. Um, your vision. Can you remember the vision you had for our country? Um, throughout this entire movement, how you know? Because I remember you kept saying, "With independence, more prosperity." I can remember that that particular slogan. Um, so, what view did you have for our people when you were going through all these um, struggles leading up to independence? We would have got rid of this clay of Guatemala to us as one. We would have established some industries here to give the people work. That is why, at the time, we encouraged industries. We had. Uh, down south, we had the, um, the pine Hercules, and we were interesting another country to come here to give industries and work to the people. But the people had to work too. Mm -hmm. That was our doctrine. Yeah, wake up and work. No, wake up and work, yeah. And I went around the country right after independence, village to village, to get mm -hmm. them ready for the hard work. Mm -hmm. well, and the villages were all friendly to us. You go and choose where you're going to eat that day, I'll have a meal with you. So and so. What you're eating today, we're going to eat with you. I'll have, have a meal with you. That's the way we used to get into the people. But before then, we had them too. We had uh, Idogara Swentes, um, treating me as an equal statesman. Had his army out there when we arrived. 
and giving us all this civil that, that was in the in, in the 50s or 60s? That was before we became independent. Mm, well, That's when they had toured the Central American country. Uh -huh. And of course, General Torrijos uh -huh. with the Spanish people, the, the, the Latin American vote. Mm -hmm. We had all of them on our side. But one thing I, I learned throughout is all things, all the things. When you go to Arsenal, you must be humble. You must not pretend that you know everything. You don't know, you need the help. And that's the way to get ahead with them. The moment you go to them that you know everything, you don't get any help. That's why General Terrijos, Torrijos went out his way to help us. Now, um, another question that comes to mind readily um, um, talking to you is um, our flag. Or, or, or national flag. What are your comments on our national flag? Some people say we just want to put some blue and white flag and, and what have you, but what are our problems or not? We your, your were comments told on by many of the old people that our flag flying from the courthouse in Parsias was a blue flag with a white circle and the coat of arms on it. And it was so. But the last one they had, they had the Union Jack in the corner there. And what we do is we took out the Union Jack and just leave the flag as it was. Mm -hmm. So it was there already, the flag. Mm -hmm. The name was already there, the settlement of Belize in the way of Honduras. The song was there, Land of the Gods. Mm -hmm. It was all there in history for us. And I, you know, I, was to make, I should have made that my speech when I went to Trinidad, you know, to, to the University of West Indies for the what, honors they gave me. That it was all there. The name of the country, the flag was there, and even the song. It was all there with us. We didn't have a committee to get the name of the country or a committee to get a national anthem. No, it was all there. Well, the flag, the red, the red stripes were added afterwards um, um, to show unity. Oh, yes, to show unity. The red, mm. that's the opposition, not the government. But there was no problem in that. They accepted it too. And you were there too, not you? Except they wanted to make it that big. <laughs> but you had to keep them that big. Yeah, without a proposal. And then we had an independence secretariat ready preparing for independence. The date for independence was announced late July 1981, with preparations made for the security of an independent Belize. We play back an audio recording of the speech given by then Premier George Price announcing the date of Belize's independence. Fellow Belizeans, in my radio statement of July 14th, I informed you that there would be discussions in London to determine the circumstances in which the independent nation of Belize would be born. There were three objectives a security or defense commitment, an economic program, and the date of independence. These discussions took place in London on July the 20th to the 22nd last week. The discussions on security resulted in a statement on defense which reads, Premier Price of Belize and the Honorable Nicholas Ridley, Minister of State at the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, discussed on the 22nd of July the arrangements to be made after independence for the defense of Belize. Recognizing its responsibility to bring Belize to secure independence, Her Majesty's government has agreed with the government of Belize appropriate measures to ensure a sound basis for the future security of Belize from any external threat. It was agreed that British forces would remain in Belize after independence for an appropriate period under arrangements to be made in an exchange of notes between the two governments on the attainment of independence by Belize. At the same time, the British government would provide military training, aid and assistance, including the provision of training teams 
and loan service personnel to assist in the development and growth of the Belize Defense Force. The Belize government, for its part, would make available training areas for use by British forces as required. It was further agreed that certain countries in the region would be invited to participate in arrangements with the United Kingdom under which, in the event of armed attack against Belize, externally organized or supported, or the threat of such an attack, they would consult together to consider what measures should be taken in relation to such an attack. These arrangements should be viewed in the context of Belize's membership of the United Nations and of the Commonwealth, and against the background of the international support already expressed for Belize's independence within its traditional and existing borders. Her Majesty's government and the government of Belize consider that these measures provide a sound basis for the future security and territorial integrity of Belize. The end of the statement. In pledge of this defense commitment and in readiness for any eventuality, the British government is arranging for the number of Harriers in Belize to be restored to its former strength by the end of this month. As regards the economic program, a conclusion has not yet been reached, and so negotiations continue with the objective of reaching agreement on a continuing program of economic cooperation at a level that will help to speed our economic growth after independence. It has been agreed that the date for the independence of Belize will be Monday, the 21st day of September, 1981. The independence of Belize means freedom for all Belizeans. It will benefit every one of us. It calls on us to unite and to move forward in patriotic commitment to a better Belize. At the same time, we must continue to do all in our power to join the United Kingdom in finding a solution to its territorial dispute with Guatemala within the context of the heads of agreement as soon as we can. On the way back to Belize from London, I was received at my request by the Assistant Secretary of State of the United States of America for Inter-American Affairs, Mr. Thomas O. Enders, in his Washington office. We had a useful conversation. We reviewed the status of the Guatemalan-British-Belizean negotiations concerning Belize, and we discussed prospects for United States relations with an independent Belize. Mr. Enders assured me that the United States looked forward to having close and friendly relations with Belize and hoped to reach agreement with the government of Belize concerning such matters as economic and security assistance. It is my understanding from the conversation that the United States intends to augment its presence in Belize as it raises the level of its representation, and that the United States will respect and support the territorial integrity of Belize. The United States will also continue to encourage Belize and Guatemala to settle their mutual differences peacefully, and urges both countries to continue seeking a peaceful solution to the Anglo-Guatemalan dispute. To settle this dispute remains our objective and uh, we propose to pursue it with dedication and determination. There was also the opportunity 
of meeting in Mexico City the Deputy Foreign Minister of Mexico, Senor Alfonso Rosenzweig, in pursuit of our policy to maintain close relations with Mexico. I was assured of Mexico's continuing firm support for the early and secure independence of Belize in 1981 with all its territory intact. I said in the July 14th statement, and I repeat, the heads of agreement will still remain the framework of a future settlement of the Anglo-Guatemalan dispute. We shall continue our endeavors to get the Joint Commission to resume its work in friendship at any time, either before or after independence. Should a treaty or treaties emerge from the work of the Joint Commission, the commitment remains that they will be put to the people of Belize in a referendum. My fellow Belizeans, we want to be friends with the people of Guatemala, who are our Central American neighbors. We again extend to them the hand of friendship. We are ready to pursue a program of economic cooperation for our mutual benefit. We do not propose to interfere with or interrupt Guatemala's peaceful access to the, to the high seas south of our territorial waters. In return, we would welcome a friendly understanding of the destiny of the Belizean people to be a sovereign and independent nation with all its territory. Our independent struggle has been long and difficult these 31 years. Now, as we reach our just objective, for which we pray daily in our Belizean prayer, let us not falter. Let us seize this opportunity with faith in God and confidence in ourselves, so that history may record that when the moment was there, we took the right decision to free Belize with all its territory so that we might live in peace, in unity, and in security. Independence Day did come, and on the 21st of September 1981, at the steps of the National Assembly, Prime Minister George Price delivered the nation's first Independence Day address. Thank you, Your Minister. Royal Highness, and please convey uh, the thanks of the people and government of Belize to Her Majesty the Queen of Belize and the head of the Commonwealth. This symbolic transition to the independent state of Belize signifies the fulfillment of a decolonization which, as a metropolitan country and founding member of the United Nations, the United Kingdom undertook to accomplish under the Charter. Belize was the last British colony on the Central American mainland, and the tradition, transition deserves the admiration and the support of all peaceful, freedom-loving nations. At our request and with our gratitude, the military presence of the United Kingdom will remain here for an appropriate time to be decided according to future circumstances. No longer a colonial power, but as a welcome partner, the United Kingdom has agreed to help us preserve and promote peace and well-being in our region. We continue our work not only to build Belize to yet greater levels of economic growth and social progress, but in doing so, to remove causes of conflict and to cooperate in the economic development of the region with all our neighbors in friendship, harmony, and peace, but with equal status of a sovereign nation with all its territory secure against external threat. Other nations have a like responsibility and no doubt determination to help us preserve and promote this peace and stability and security. To enlist their formal and legal cooperation, 
We apply for membership in the United Nations, the Organization of American States, and the Non-Aligned Movement. The Secretary General of the Commonwealth of Nations informed us a few days ago that today, on attaining its independence, Belize becomes a member of the Commonwealth. May other organizations to which we apply also do the same. Present with us, distinguished members of these world bodies, we welcome you and thank you for coming to our celebrations. We ask that you continue to help us as you have done successfully so that our nations can work together in this great task of creating a better region in a better world. As we become a member of world communities, we hear the question asked, what is Belize and its people and how will they fit among you? In reply, Belize is a Caribbean and Central American nation which works and lives a revolution that is peaceful, constructive, new, progressive, and Belizean. It is our own with all our national attributes. Belize is a people with all the attributes of nationhood, having one flag, one government, one constitution. Our minds imbues the democratic process. Our hands works the mixed economy. Our heart beats with social justice. And our soul cherishes treasures of the spirit. Your Royal Highnesses, Mr. Presidents, Excellencies, Prime Ministers, distinguished delegates, honored guests, my fellow Belizeans, may you take to your homes and to your countries assurances of our deepest gratitude and most solemn respect of the rights of others. Do carry this message. Belize, with the help of God and the support of its people, will stand upright and will do its duty to bring peace, stability, and prosperity to our region and to wider circles of our planet Earth. This is our wish and our prayer as we bid all at home and abroad a very happy Independence Day. My Thank you, Your Minister. Royal Highness, and please convey uh, the thanks of the people and government of Belize to Her Majesty the Queen of Belize and the head of the Commonwealth. This symbolic transition to the independent state of Belize signifies the fulfillment of a decolonization which, as a metropolitan country and founding member of the United Nations, the United Kingdom undertook to accomplish under the Charter. Belize was the last British colony on the Central American mainland, and the tradition, transition deserves the admiration and the support of all peaceful, freedom-loving nations. At our request and with our gratitude, the military presence of the United Kingdom will remain here for an appropriate time to be decided according to future circumstances. No longer a colonial power, but as a welcome partner, the United Kingdom has agreed to help us preserve and promote peace and well-being in our region. We continue our work not only to build Belize to yet greater levels of economic growth and social progress, but in doing so, to remove causes of conflict and to cooperate in the economic development of the region with all our neighbors in friendship, harmony, and peace, but with equal status of a sovereign nation with all its territory secure against external threat. Other nations have a like responsibility and no doubt determination to help us preserve and promote this peace and stability and security. To enlist their formal and legal cooperation, we apply for membership in the United Nations, the Organization of American States, 
and the non-aligned movement. The Secretary General of the Commonwealth of Nations informed us a few days ago that today, unattaining its independence, Belize becomes a member of the Commonwealth. May other organizations to which we apply also do the same. Present with us, distinguished members of these world bodies, we welcome you and thank you for coming to our celebrations. We ask that you continue to help us as you have done successfully so that our nations can work together in this great task of creating a better region in a better world. As we become a member of world communities, we hear the question asked, what is Belize and its people, and how will they fit among you? In reply, Belize is a Caribbean and Central American nation which works and lives a revolution that is peaceful, constructive, new, progressive, and Belizean. It is our own with all our national attributes. Belize is a people with all the attributes of nationhood, having one flag, one government, one constitution. Our minds imbues the democratic process. Our hands works the mixed economy. Our heart beats with social justice. And our soul cherishes treasures of the spirit. Your Royal Highnesses, Mr. Presidents, Excellencies, Prime Ministers, distinguished delegates, honored guests, my fellow Belizeans, may you take to your homes and to your countries assurances of our deepest gratitude and most solemn respect of the rights of others. Do carry this message. Belize with the help of God and the support of its people, will stand upright and will do its duty to bring peace, stability, and prosperity to our region and to wider circles of our planet Earth. This is our wish and our prayer as we bid all at home and abroad a very happy Independence Day. When we return, we'll share the video from the George Price Center for Peace and Development on the life of the Right Honorable George Price. The National Gas Company Limited was born of the need for the country of Belize to have a marine gas terminal of its own, thereby securing supplies of critical cooking gas for a growing population. As Belize's population grew, the time came for a modern marine gas terminal that ensured safety, security of supply, and a requisite infrastructure for industry-accepted quality assurance now demanded by the people of Belize. In 2020, the National Gas Company Limited became a reality. The National Gas Company Limited is a $60 million public-private partnership where Belize's private sector would design, finance, construct, and manage a state-of-the-art national marine terminal facility and two complementary storage depots away from the coast. After 15 years, the National Gas Company would be fully turned over to the country and people of Belize at no cost to the taxpayer. The National Gas Company of Belize, fueling Belize forward. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, BNEC, is a public-private partnership between Belize Natural Energy Limited and the government of Belize. The trust was set up in February 2008, whereby 1% of the revenues from BNE flows to the trust to give Belizeans a chance to create a mindset to empower themselves. To date, over 11 million 100,000 Belizean dollars have been invested in educational and social environment projects and programs throughout Belize. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, contributing to the education and empowerment of Belizeans. Shell V Power. 
with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well, go shell. We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Orndrag, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry, get more, be less. Welcome to the George Price Center for Peace and Development. We are here thanks to God's help and the people's support. Belize became a sovereign and independence nation on September the 21st, 1981. And four days later, a member state of the United Nations. The center works for peace and development in our region. From Belize, the new Central American nation in the heart there of the There is Caribbean no need basin. to fear freedom. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Proverbs 19.21 NIV On January 15, 1919, Belize City heard the first cries of a newborn George Price, son of William Cadle and Irene Cecilia Price. Little did anyone know that this voice would one day be heard throughout the entire country, proclaiming a vision for Belize to become a proud, vibrant, independent nation. The independence of Belize means freedom for all Belizeans. It will benefit every one of us. It calls on us to unite and to move forward in patriotic commitment to a better Belize. George enjoyed a carefree childhood in the now famous house on 3 Pickstock Street with his 10 siblings. Being of strong Catholic faith, his parents enrolled George at Holy Redeemer Primary School and later at St. John's College, where he entered as a boarder. His siblings and classmates have fond memories of growing up with George. We both joined the Holy Redeemer Boy Scouts. We were both close together then. We used to camp out together. He's always in good humor, enjoying some little jokes, give some, giving some of his own also. I, I suppose he surprised a lot of persons because George Price was a very quiet person. Nobody would imagine that he would ever be a politician. On September 10, 1931, 12-year-old George narrowly escaped death when a major hurricane struck Belize City, totally destroying the college he was attending. The storm claimed the life of 22 of his fellow students and teachers, together with many other Belizeans. But as his father later testified, George was saved for a higher mission. When at age 16, George felt a call to the priesthood. This prophetic claim appeared to be fulfilled. He attended the minor seminary of St. Augustine in Missouri, USA, and the major seminary in Guatemala. Belize was experiencing a very hard time. It was just after the infamous world crisis of 1931, when the stock market crashed and everything became very economical depressed. With the raging war in Europe preventing him from traveling to Rome to continue his studies, and his father now ailing at home, George's life path met an unexpected curb. He decided to return to Belize and through his first employer became involved in politics. The higher mission only now became clear. What followed was that the Second World War started, and during that period, there was a scarcity of almost everything. The salary of a person in those days was 25 cents a day, and uh, in some instances, not even a salary. They were given a ration. 
It was George's strong sense for social justice that brought out the leader in him. On December 31, 1949, the British government devalued the British Honduras dollar. It was recognized that this would bring additional hardship to the people of Belize at a time of large-scale unemployment and poverty. That very night, a group of young Belizean leaders, George Price included, formed the People's Committee to protest the actions of the colonial government. The peaceful, constructive Belizean revolution had begun. They began to inform the people more. They had public meetings and um, rallies and demonstrations and port parades. It started in Belize City, but it spread throughout the country that this was the salvation of the people. The people received it even though they did not understand well what this movement was. But because of the, the, their suffering, they saw a ray of hope, better life for the workers, better life for the farmers, better life for, for every, all Belizeans. After months of protest marches and meetings, the committee evolved into the People's United Party. On September 29, 1950, the party's constitution proclaimed the goal of political and economic independence, a better life for all Belizeans. He led by action and example. He didn't lecture you or tell you well, this is the way to do it. Setting the path, uh, steering the course through his own action, through his own example. In 1956, George was elected the leader of the PUP. He visited the length and breadth of the country in his famous Land Rover, reaching villages through the mud, pristine jungle and streams to rally the people to join as one in the plight for independence for Belize. He has a method that we qualified as forward ever, backward never. People remember the term wake up and work on the radio every morning. Wake up Belize, we invite you to wake up and work. We send the partners for development our very best wishes and warmest greetings. To face life and the world alone is a frightening thing, but together, as brothers in partnership, we have confidence and we can feel the joy of living. We are not without hope in the future. Then he said, we unite to build a nation. He's compassionate. He, he believes in people. He loves people. He cares for people. And he knows your name. You're not just a voter. You're a person. I remember, for example, we were in Colombo, Sri Lanka, at one of the meetings of the non-aligned movement. Sitting around us, uh, people like Fidel Castro, Yasser Arafat, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, the, the South American um, writer, all these people around. And he treated each one as an equal. The conversations that Mr. Price had with all these leaders whose names are down in the history books are simple, ordinary conversations. These are conversations about yourself, how you feel, your family, your children, what you look forward to. On the international scene, George skillfully managed to gain support for Belize's quest for independence. An unfounded claim by Guatemala to Belize's territory complicated matters, yet it did not prove a match for George Price's leadership. With sheer determination, he steered the country from the rough seas to a safe haven of an independent Belize. Now that we are back home, the work must go on to carry out our theme on Independence Day. The creation continues. Mr. Price was very insistent that the objective of the nationalist movement in Belize was the attainment of uh, political independence, sovereignty, territorial integrity. This was the, the rallying cry of the nationalist movement. I think he developed the diplomatic skills as he went along. The diplomatic finesse that Mr. Price demonstrated when he first entered the United Nations was a, a man born to the manor. He had never had that kind of experience before. His background as a, as a businessman, as a priest, as a politician in Belize had never prepared him for the corridors of the United Nations. You would want to know how Mr. Price approached people. 
he approached them very, very simply. And particularly in the corridors of power, in the corridors of the United Nations or in the capitals uh, of the world, he would walk into a room and he would say to the nearest person, I am George Price, who are you? The you eventually ended up to be either a minister of foreign affairs of some uh, country that we needed to talk to or an ambassador of a friendly or perhaps an unfriendly uh, country. All the countries represented at the United Nations and in the non-aligned movement, we treated as friends. That was the lead that Mr. Price gave us. If you want to have them on your side, you begin by being on their side first. It was little over 30 years after George Price and his companions formulated their vision for Belize on September 21st, 1981, that the Union Jack was lowered and at last the Belizean flag proudly flew over our independent country. We dedicate this new flag of independence to the people and government of Belize, secure in its sovereignty and owner of all its territory. Belize, with the help of God and the support of its people, will stand upright and will do its duty to bring peace, stability, and prosperity to our region. Pero como socio bienvenido, el Reino Unido ha convenido ayudarnos a preservar y promover la paz y el bienestar en nuestra región. The higher mission which William Cadle Price envisioned for his son, seemed to have come to fruition. Yet George's vision for Belize did not stop there. Much has been done, but much more has yet to be done. And we feel with a state of independence, we can do the much more that is yet to be done. During his two tenures as prime minister, he pushed for revolutionary reforms and social justice for all Belizeans. To speak of George Price is very to speak of Belize, to think of George Price is to think of Belize. We look back and see that this is the man, his beliefs, his values that were the guiding light that steered Belize from a colonial backwater to what it is today, a sovereign democratic state in Central America in the Caribbean region. And the amazing thing of George Price is that he was able to do it with conservative leaders like Margaret Thatcher of Britain at the time, as well as with revolutionaries like Fidel Castro of Cuba and Omar Torrios of Panama. The June 1979 edition of Tropic of the Miami Herald featured George Price in an article Bargain Price. George Price runs his country for about $1.60 an hour and still has a little left over for those who really need it. His modest lifestyle and personal honesty have remained on question and admired even by his opponents. I've been amazed at, at his modesty. Uh, you know, people who fly very high have a great problem going back to Earth. But uh, my recollection and even the present situation where Mr. Price is in, now as the father of the nation, makes him the Kipling man. He walks among kings, but he keeps the common touch. He is satisfied with the minimal comfort. He doesn't have a fan in his house, no air condition, no television. He doesn't have luxurious furniture. He has his rocking chair. He has a round table. And if I could recall, he told me that was where the revolution started. That was where the first meeting of the People's Committee was founded in 1949. And I would say like 10 years ago, I had to twist his hand to get a little fridge for him to at least have a couple of bottles of cool water. This trip to Mexico, when I came back, I bought one pair of, um, Zaga was the brand then, briefs. And we didn't have the Friendship Bridge, it was an old crank ferry and everything, and uh, the customs house was just an old shed essentially. And uh, so he told me, well boys, you have to declare to the officers what you've purchased, you know. I went to quote my bag of briefs. The customs officer just looked at me and smiled and he said, that's all right, you know. But I think what Mr. Price was telling us was, you render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. I was a little boy and of course I sat back and listened to all the conversation and learned a lot about where our country was and where it was going. 
And I remember one time he was talking about a university in Belize. And this was in the 60s when you only have about 90,000 people, you see. So because in Merida they had a university and they only had a little more than 100,000 people. Man was thinking way ahead of his time, you see. From seminarian to politician, George Price remained strong in his Christian faith. And his life's purpose of serving God and his country never faded. I would like to see the, the people praying more. 24 hours a day can be a 24 hours of prayer, wanting to do the right thing. I would like to see they're giving more, um, all of us, not myself, give more weight to the spirit than to the material. Mr. Price was, is, and was a prayerful man, and he exemplified that in his daily life as a young man, and he continued that practice as, as the Prime Minister. And I think he probably acquired strength from that to be able to persevere in, in politics. Although, without a doubt, the most well-known public figure of Belize since the 1950s, George Price has curiously remained the most private person. Very few are privileged to truly know George Price, the individual. When we would travel in the, in the remote areas and we know that midday would catch us away from restaurant, we would normally go with a pack bread, a can of corned beef, um, sometimes a little pack of brown sugar, bottle of water and some lime. At midday or at 5 to 12 we would stop, we'll get on that Land Rover bonnet, prepare the lime juice, open the canned beef, sometimes we'll leave it a little while on the vehicle bonnet for the sun to warm it, then we make sandwich. In the days of the Land Rover, anybody that was on the road hitchhiking, if they would hear a machine coming and they looked down the road and saw that Land Rover and the blue and white flag waving, that individual was the happiest person because he knew for sure that he will get a lift. But he had some questions for whoever he picked up. He was always there to make conversation and find out the condition of people. Although officially retired from the political scene, George Price remained active in a number of international initiatives, such as the Council for the Freely Elected Heads of Governments, working with his good friend Jimmy Carter. He received national and international recognition, being awarded the orders of Belize, Mexico, Venezuela, Honduras, Cuba, and CARICOM. After the Belize had achieved its political independence, Mr. Price uh, was invited along with other outstanding leaders to join the heads of freely elected governments at the Carter Center by President Jimmy Carter. The question may be asked, well, why George Price? And the simple answer is that he is the man that established democracy in Belize. This man can be considered one of the greatest moral and political leaders in the world. Little Belize has, in many instances, captured the imagination of the world and oftentimes when George Price was Prime Minister. To date, George Price's vision for Belize remains one of hope for the continued peaceful development of his country and the people he so loves. My hope and wish for the people that we all grow together, we all enjoy the benefits of independence because there are benefits, but there also are problems which must be solved. We use the benefits to solve and to rid ourselves of the bad things that are around us. Very many thanks for your visit. We trust that you have learned more about the people of Belize, its history, and its revolution. Peaceful, constructive, and Belizean. And as we part, let us share the faith and hope for a better world. He is this quintessential gentleman, a man for all times. It is said that leadership is not perfect. And I know Mr. Price is not a perfect man, but I do know that his mission in our country was a perfect mission. It is my hope that we can really foster that great love and respect in our children for this gentleman who is our national hero. He is a tireless man in his work. 
he gets up at five, he goes to his mass, daily mass. From there he begins to inspect what is wrong or what should be done. And then he has some piece of paper there writing everything that he sees. When he is finished, when he goes to his office, he would begin to write notes to every minister, to every representative. You are not doing this, you are better go and do this. He kept this political party as how a general would keep an army. Keep you on your toes at all time. Mi papá cuando vino en aquel tiempo acá a Belice, él se sintió muy comprometido con el señor eh, Jospray, el gobierno de la nación de Belice. Le dio donde trabajar y cuando cultivó varias manzanas, ocho manzanas de milpa. Y entonces Jospray en ese tiempo usaba aquellos graneros que están por 4H para envasar la cosecha que se cultivaba en aquellos tiempos. El señor Jospray llevaba buen arranque. Para los agricultores. One of the things that were very, very um, important in Mr. Price's life that I've learned over the years I've been with him is punctuality. I used to attend session in cabinet meeting as a senator. Okay, and I can say that if we were to start nine o'clock, like a minute to nine, he will tell the cab sec, close the door. And at nine o'clock, he will have a bell similar to this on his desk, and he will sing it. Or sometimes senators, I could recall, were embarrassed because when they came to the door, it was locked. I remember vividly one time at the United Nations in New York, um, when he was uh, not yet prime minister, we had not yet become uh, independence. He was the premier. U.S. government, of course, gives security to heads of governments and, and so on. And, uh, by his hotel door, you had these marine-type Secret Service agents to protect him. And he opened the door in, late in the evening and he said, don't you have a family to look after? I don't need anybody to protect me. Go and look after your wife and children. Of course, that's great confusion in the United States Secret Service. You, nobody talks like that. But he ended up getting those people to leave and to go and look after the, their wives and children. I know him quite a bit because I worked with him for many years. I wronged him for many years, right, as um, chief photographer in the information department. So I, there was this picture, I mean, surprised the expression on his face. And I decided, let me take this picture. And I'll present it to him one of these days. I let him say, look, look, see, this is a picture taken with natural light. You, you weren't aware of the camera, right? And he fell in love with that picture, and I printed, I don't know how many copies of it for him. He was, very, he was very fond of it. I've done a lot of celebrities, but Mr. Price was one who appreciated what was done because it was natural light. And he wasn't aware, so he wasn't set for it. There was it. It's a natural picture, Mr. Price. Being unmarried, he was able to adopt the whole nation and become the father of the nation. I first met Mr. Price whilst he was campaigning for the March 1961 general elections. I was impressed by his humility and his militancy in calling on the British for self-government and later independence. The Belizeanization process was all-consuming, yet he instituted a major land reform program which allowed many Belizeans to become first-time landowners. The Mr. Price I met in 1961 never changed his beliefs, and he sincerely believes in whatever he says and does. January 15, 2022 will mark the 103rd anniversary of the birth of Mr. Price. His legacy will forever live on in the hearts and minds of all of us Belizeans. George Price was described to me as the most successful elected politician in the History of Mankind by Canadian author Alan Twigg. The epitaph on his tombstone reads, A good Belizean, one who went through life on a pilgrimage and left the world a better place than he found it. On our visit to his gravesite, we found a Belizean, Bernard Richards. Bernard takes great pride in ensuring that the inscription on Mr. Price's tomb is visible as he explains, he does this every year. 
And Bernard Richards is the man who is doing this detailed work on the tomb of the father of the nation of Belize, the Right Honorable George Price. Um, Bernard, um, you told me you do, you do this every year. Uh, yes, sir. Every time I had a chance, sir. Mr. Price, then, sir. Okay. What, what did Mr. Price mean to you? What does he mean to you? Uh, Mr. Price means a lot to me, sir. Because when I used to be a young boy, and he used to pass by Freetown. I see the past part of Freetown and run out, run out and they be having a surprise and they walk and he man, three, three good, you know. So I always remember good things about my surprise and I never forget them. I remember when they used to come up here to always say, Mr. Richard, I used to do the engraver every time I tell me before he died, he says, Mr. Richard, I always do a good job, sir. So I always got good memories about my surprise. You know, every year, I always want to do this when it comes to my surprise. Grave and always and make sure I get it done. So you've done this every year since his passing? Since his passing, every year. And his birthday for his birthday? Yep. And I make sure I did free birthday. And you do this on your own? Well. What the request of the family? Well, yep. I do it on my own. And I always remember I am in June, so, you know, I have my memories and I always do for my surprise, sir. So for you, this is an act of love and something that you, you do from your heart in honor of the late, right honorable George. Price. Yes, sir. Feel from your heart, from your heart. Feel this. If you do this, for me, surprise, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, so now, thank you. Thank you, sir. January 15 is now a public and bank holiday in which we reflect on the life and achievements of the father of our nation. It is George Price Day. We take the opportunity on behalf of our partners to wish everyone a happy George Price Day. Our independent struggle has been long and difficult these 31 years. Now, as we reach our just objective, for which we pray daily, in our Belizean prayer, let us not falter. Let us seize this opportunity with faith in God and confidence in ourselves, so that history may record that when the moment was there, we took the right decision to free Belize with all its territory, so that we might live in peace, in unity, and in security. Please watch Knowledge of the Past, Impacting the Present, Building the Future. <laughs>